Have you ever seen those thin, crispy cookies in the store with the beautiful design on them? that are called pizzelle or pizzelle, whichever you, however you pronounce it. And they look so delicious. And if you've ate them, you know they are so delicious. That's what I'm gonna show you how to make today. Hey friends, this is Angela from Art of Creation Homestead. You're in the kitchen with me again. And I'm using up some eggs because <laughs> we've got a lot of eggs. Using up some eggs. This is a perfect way to use them. I'm making homemade pizzelle. I pronounce it pizzelle. Some people pronounce it pizzelle. Whichever you pronounce it, it's delicious. These are a very thin, crispy wafer cookie. I will tell you about them as I'm mixing this up. In this bowl, we have three large eggs from our beautiful hens. We have three fourths of a cup of sugar. We have a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And to that, I am adding two roughly measured teaspoons of vanilla. You guys know if you've been with me for long, I don't measure vanilla. And I'm using my beautiful whisk. This thing is amazing. If you don't have one, you need one. And you want to whisk this together. While I'm whisking, I will tell you about pizzelle in case you don't know what they are. They are a very thin wafer cookie that is Italian. A lot of times you will find ones that are anise flavored and, and in Italy, that's the biggest one that they make anise flavored ones a lot. Personally, I prefer vanilla so or chocolate. I make a killer chocolate pizza like if you want to see that these are so fun to make they are a thin crispy cookie they're so light that you could eat a ton of them you can you can sandwich ice cream between them and make an ice cream sandwich you can put anything you want between them you can eat them just straight up um, most pizza like, as long as they are still before they've gotten cool, you can roll them and stuff them with whipped cream and chocolate chips or cannoli filling or whatever. They are amazing. Unfortunately, you do need special equipment to make these, but it is so worth the investment. I will show you in just a few minutes when we get to the cooking portion, I will show you my pizzelle maker. Mine is a really good one. Love it to death, it's a Cuisinart brand. I will leave a link in the description below to mine and I will probably, you can get them cheaper than that one. I will probably leave a link in the description below to a cheaper one, but I can tell you I've never used the, I've never used one that is cheaper than this. I've always used my Cuisinart, so I can't tell you how good the others are going to work. You want to whisk that pretty good until it's all incorporated and see. Everything's incorporated now. Now, to this, we are going to add one and three-fourths cup of flour and two teaspoons of baking powder. And at this point, you will want to switch away from that marvelous whisk. And I am using a silicone spatula because it's easier to scrape down the sides. And you will mix all your dry ingredients into that wet ingredients. Now, I know that seems a little weird that you are making a cookie and you are starting out with the eggs and sugar and not butter. You are adding butter to this. As you can see, I've got melted butter here. You are adding that. You will add that later. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but it works. The order that you do these in is very important. You have to stick to this order in order for them to turn out their best. We have a particular way that we love to eat these, one of our favorite ways to eat these. And when it gets dessert time, I will show you what that way is. It is so fabulous, and I can't wait to show it to you. Jason absolutely adores these. I make them often when we're getting a lot of eggs because as you saw, it takes three eggs to make a batch of them. That helps use up some eggs. <laughs> now here we have one stick, which is a half a cup, of unsalted 
melted butter that I have let cool. It's been cooling for about five minutes now. That way it doesn't make everything all greasy. You wanna go ahead and add that in now. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, looks a little strange, but I've made it with starting out with the butter and I've made it with putting the butter in last. They turn out way better if you put the butter in last. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense why that order would make a difference in the cookie, but it actually makes a huge difference in the cookie. And don't throw your butter everywhere like I just did. <sighs> a messy cook's a good cook. Angela, a messy cook's a good cook. Just keep telling yourself that. And that quick, your beautiful pizzelli batter is all ready to go into the maker. Now I will show you this incredibly important piece of equipment to make these. Trust me, like I said, it's worth the investment. Now this is my pizzelli maker. I have it plugged in. You can find ones that work on the stove top. I prefer the electric one. It makes two pizzelli at a time. And as you can see, the little red light on is down here at the bottom. That tells you that it is not ready to go yet. It will turn green when it's ready. And you have a dial down here that says how dark you want them. Usually I do between three and four because I don't like them horribly dark, but I don't like them pale either. And I, I have to wait until that light turns green with this particular model. You wait until the light turns green and then you've got a lock here because it locks it down hard because you need it to, to flatten it perfect. And I will wait till that light turns green and then I'll show you how we do this. Okay, my light is green now. Most, most pizzelli makers come with a little spoon that is supposed to be the right size for this. I find it just clunky. I prefer to use a small cookie scoop. This one is about roughly a tablespoon. It works perfect. Now, we are just going to open it up and see you can see the beautiful design is there. Now, we are going to just scoop up one level scoop of batter. See, it's gotten nice and stiff on us now. It's more like a dough. Now you wanna put it a little off center. This is what I found makes them the best and cleanest is if you put them a little off center, leaning a little toward the back. You put one on each circle and then you close it up and you lock it. You push down until the lock goes over and you will let it go. At the, that point, this green light will turn back red at one point. You will let it go until the, the green light turns, turns back on. I'll show you what they look like when they come out. Okay, our light is now green. Now I'm gonna open it up and show you what they look like. Look at there. Aren't those gorgeous? Now your first ones will be a little darker they always are hit hit adjust to to it later. See, isn't that beautiful? See, now they're pliable. So you could roll them up like this and stuff them. Most of most of them, this one particular, has a little dowel rod that you can roll them around. Now you want to lay them on a cooling rack. At this point, you want to lay them on a cooling rack so that they cool completely. And as they cool, they will get nice and crispy. They will get beautifully crispy. These are to die for. I have to tell you, they are to die for. If you have never had a pizzelle, even store-bought ones, if you've never had a pizzelle, you got to do this. They are phenomenal. <laughs> it's, it's worth the investment. Now, once again, I'm going to lock it down. And I'm just going to keep making these batch after batch until they're done. It just takes a matter of minutes to make all, to make the dough and to make all of the pizzelli. It's done in no time flat. I will show you what they all look like when they're done. And I can't wait to show you our favorite way to eat them. See, your second batch will be a lot lighter in color because it's gotten used to the heat cycle. See, they're, these are perfect. These are perfectly golden brown. And they are awesome. <laughs> look at that. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I'm gonna keep making these. As you can see, these beauties are done. 
that they, they are cooled and you'll get anywhere from 30 to 36 depending on the size of the circles in your pizzelle maker I will tell you you probably noticed that I did not spray the pizzelle maker this dough has a lot of butter in it and the Cuisinart pizzelle maker that I use has an extremely non-stick surface so I never have had to use anything and they've never stuck like I said I cannot vouch for cheaper ones I cannot vouch for any other brand but this so I can't tell you if they will stick in that but as you can see if it goes past your circle and you don't want that you want it to look perfect wait about three to five minutes until it's completely cool and crisp up because see where they were bending before see they're completely stiff now and see you can just snap it off you can just snap those little ends off and make for a clean end i always say those little crispy ends are cook's treat because they are absolutely delicious and nobody you're in the kitchen alone nobody will ever know that you were eating them nobody will ever know that they looked funky and that you ate the little little pieces <laughs> and you know i showed you if you'll remember i showed you the texture of what they were like before that they would just roll right up you could roll them into a cannoli shell you could even roll them into a little little tiny cone and make a little tiny ice cream cone out of them now let me show you what the texture is like now did you hear that snap they are so crisp look at that they are so crisp you can see just how crisp they are you heard that snap listen listen to that they are so crisp and so delicious not overly sweet just amazing and we'll show you our favorite way to eat them when it comes to dessert time okay now i'm about to show you one of our favorite ways to eat them i take one of them you don't have to be picky about the way they look but i like the design on the outside so <laughs> i put that down now you can put anything you want on them you can put fruit spread you can put anything on it but one of my favorite things to do is put just a little smear of Nutella this combination <laughs> is absolutely amazing you don't have to put much just a little just a little coating because you don't want it gushing out everywhere or as I like to say that Jason thinks I'm funny ooching out everywhere <laughs> now you take another one put it on top and you got a little sandwich all right now i'm get to give this a little taste which by the way honestly will taste it like this and that's fine but they're really darn tasty just by their own, on their cell it's uh, by their cell so mm -hmm. naturally they're wonderful um they're light they're thin crispy a lot of flavor just and it's a blank canvas if you want to add flavors to it and it's um really good on their own on by their stuff like i said so thank you guys so much for watching we do appreciate it hey my name is jason a smart one over there that's angela k i love you guys god bless you goodbye